Hey there! Are you ready for another brain workout today? Because I have 30 new riddles for you. I'll show you a pair of people for each one, and you'll have to decide which person doesn't behave wisely. You'll have 7 seconds per riddle to make your decision. Every right answer will award you 1 point. Ready? Grab a pencil and a piece of paper, and let's get started! Charlotte and Elizabeth are doing some homework. Charlotte is going to iron some clothes, and Elizabeth is about to cook. Who's not being smart? Elizabeth. Charlotte's safe because the iron is turned off. Lucas and Liam are going on a field trip with their kids. Lucas is distracted while his daughter is climbing a tree. Liam is talking to another parent while his son is petting a dog. Who is wrong? Lucas. The branch his daughter is climbing is cracking, and she is about to fall. Ava and Olivia are finally leaving home for their first night out after maternity leave. Ava decides to walk, and Olivia is waiting for a taxi. Who is not ready? Olivia. She forgot to finish her makeup. Michael and Logan are bloggers who take selfies in dangerous places. This time, Michael is taking a selfie while surfing on a huge wave, and Logan is taking one standing on the edge of a bridge. Who is not smart? Michael. In Logan's case, at least there are people around who can call emergency services if something goes wrong. Michael is alone. It's early morning. Ian and Nolan are driving their kids to school. Who is not smart? Nolan. His child is not in the car. Jackson and Emma are volunteering at an animal shelter. Jackson is feeding the cats, and Emma is washing the dogs. Who is wrong? Jackson. He gave the cats dog food by mistake. Scarlett and Ellie are going to bed. Scarlett kept her door open so her cat could enter during the night, while Ellie prefers to close her door. Who is not smart? Scarlett. You should always close your bedroom door at night. In case of fire, it'll stop the flames for a while and give you more time. Riley and Isabella are taking their kids to kindergarten. Riley is riding a bike with her daughter, and Isabella and her son are going by car. Who is wrong? Isabella. Her child isn't wearing a seatbelt. Lily and Oliver have job interviews at 4 o'clock. Lily is ironing her best suit, and Oliver is waiting in the hallway wearing jeans. Who's not getting the job today? Lily. She must have forgotten the time. The interview is in 5 minutes, and she's still at home. Sophia and Aiden are working in the garden. Sophia is watering the flowers while her cat is walking around. Aiden is mowing the lawn while his child is playing nearby. Who's not smart? Aiden. It's dangerous to use the lawnmower when children are close by. John and Brandon are making breakfast for their kids. John is making sandwiches, and Brandon is making eggs with bacon. Who is wrong? Brandon. He forgot to turn on the stove. Thomas and Abigail are going on a date. Thomas arrived a half an hour early and decided to buy some flowers. Abigail just returned from London and is driving to meet him. Who is wrong? Abigail. 
She's driving on the left side of the road. Ryan and Kaylee are having fun outside during their Christmas break. Ryan is learning how to skate on the lake, and Kaylee is skiing in the forest. Who is not smart? Ryan. The ice on the lake is cracking, and there's no one around to help him. Asher and Haley are enjoying their vacations. Asher is chilling at the beach, and Haley is climbing the highest mountain around. Who is not behaving wisely? Asher. Although Haley's activity is quite risky, she seems to be okay. But Asher fell asleep at the beach and is going to get a sunburn. Chloe and Avery are having some quality time on Friday. Chloe is reading a book, and Avery is watching a documentary. Who is missing something? Avery. She forgot to turn off the oven, and something's burning. Hannah and Maya are meeting their friends today. Hannah arrived by bike and is waiting for her friend by the house. Maya arrived by car, opened the doors, and is waiting for her friend to come down. Who is not smart? Maya. It's not safe to stay in the car with unlocked doors. A stranger can quickly get in the car and she wouldn't be able to do anything from the front seat. Mason and Jacob are going on a trip to the desert, where they'll spend a whole day. Who is not adequately prepared? Mason. The sun is powerful, and he's not wearing a hat. Emily and Madison are spending their time outdoors, but it's not their lucky day. Emily stumbled and fell in some mud. Madison was swinging but fell. Now, they both are getting up. Who made a mistake? Madison. The swing is still moving, and it may hit her head if she gets up. Aubrey and James are cleaning the house. Aubrey is listening to music while vacuuming the living room, and James is washing the windows. Who is not being smart? Aubrey. The vacuum cleaner isn't plugged in. Mia and Ethan are going on summer vacation. Mia is going to Greece, and Ethan is visiting his brother in Sydney. Who is not smart? Ethan. He's packed shorts and swimwear, but he won't need them because it's winter in Australia. Carter and Layla are in a hurry for work. Carter is walking while talking on his phone, and Layla is running while texting. Who's going to be late? Layla. She's looking at her phone and doesn't see the pit she's about to walk into. Leah and Aaron are driving to meet their friends. Leah has all of her things scattered in the car. And Aaron is traveling above the speed limit. Who is not smart? Leah. It's not safe to keep unprotected things inside the car. In case she stops suddenly, something can hit her very hard. William and Daniel are driving and are late for work. Who is wrong? Daniel, he's driving way above the speed limit in the neighborhood. Jane and Amelia are resting in the park after running 5 miles. Jane is eating, and Amelia is drinking water from the fountain. Who is not smart? Amelia, the warning sign says that the water isn't drinkable. Max and Ezra were driving around the desert and got stuck in the middle of nowhere. They burned a spare tire to produce some smoke. 
Max stayed close to the tire, and Ezra walked away in search of something helpful. Who is not smart? Ezra, you should never leave the vehicle. Chances are the rescuers will notice the smoke and find you. But if you go, you might miss them. Both Jonathan and Savannah didn't sleep well and are starting their morning. While Savannah is preparing some coffee, Jonathan is taking out the trash. Who is doing something wrong? Jonathan. Instead of the trash, he's taking out the old toys they collected to donate. Stella and Aurora didn't study for the test. One of them decided to try her best, and the other is planning to cheat. Can you spot who's cheating? Stella. She has a lot of bags surrounding her, so she must be trying to hide something. Miles and Cooper were walking in a park when a sudden storm erupted. Lightning struck a tree, and Miles decided to hide under it. Cooper entered a little shack nearby. Who is wrong? Miles. The belief that lightning never strikes in the same place twice is just a common misconception. An indoor shelter is one of the best places to hide. Leo and Melanie are preparing a barbecue party. Leo is cooking, and Melanie is decorating the yard. Who is not smart? Leo. While he's cooking, the meat is spoiling in the direct sun. Congrats! That's it for today. Now, sum up your points. If you got 10 points or less, you scored below average. Eh, don't be sad. It's just the beginning. You can check out some other riddles to train and prepare for the next round. If you got between 10 and 25 points, you scored average. Great! You're on the right way! And finally, if you got 26 points or more, you're in great intellectual shape. Here's an interactive medal from me and my admiration. Good for you! They say seeing is believing, but is it really? Optical illusions have a mind-boggling way to trick our brains. They use a combination of color, light, or particular patterns that can make us see things that aren't there. Today, we're taking our brains for a test drive and seeing how these illusions work. Let's start easy. Behind all of these little black dots, there's an image. Are you part of the 1% of people that can see it? It's a minion. Congrats if you spotted that. Here's another one in this style. Can you see what's hidden here? It's a ninja turtle. Honestly, you did need to be a bit of a ninja to see that one. And what about this one? It's Homer Simpson. So now there's something hidden behind black stripes. How's your x-ray vision working? You got it if you said it's one of the dragons from How to Train Your Dragon. That's cute. We're moving on to phase two, so this will get a little bit trickier, okay? Your task is to find the fourth object in each image. You have seven seconds to spot all four items. Three, two, one, go. Hmm, did anyone find the straw by any chance? Anyways, could you spot the nail? What was hardest for you to find? The egg or the button? So now we're going to step up our game. This is medium level difficulty and you'll have 7 seconds to find all 4 items. Ready? Go! Hmm, did anyone find the french fries? 
I sure didn't. Up next, four women and a baby. Yikes, this is hard. Could anyone spot the hair comb? Here's another one for you. Where on earth was that banana hiding? Good luck with this next one. So the envelope is hiding behind the bathroom pipe. I love black and white. But I'm still searching for that white egg if you ask me. If this were my room, my mom would be telling me to clean it up ASAP. -y. It took me a while to find that little birdie, but the mission was successful. Good morning, y'all. Oh, bummer, I couldn't find the book, could you? What object can't you find here? I had trouble locating the brush. Too many details, too little time. I have to say, you do have a pretty good eye for detail, but we're changing the game now. You know what they say, you need to keep changing the stimulus to make your brain work better and better. So now, it's emoji time. You'll have four seconds in this round. Did you see that one of them didn't have laughing tears? Where's the really sad emoji? And here I was thinking that clowns were supposed to be happy. I guess we all have our bad days, huh? What about this one? Oh, it's the browless one, isn't it? Can you spot the odd one? Oh, so it's a dairy-free burger. There's one with a different grim on its face. That's the one. I think your eyes are pretty warmed up now. So we'll move on to some hard level optical illusions, okay? This first one is called the impossible triangle. But wait, what makes it so impossible? You have seven seconds to figure that out. The so-called Penrose Triangle is also known as the Impossible Triangle because it could never exist in reality. This magical triangle defies the laws of Euclidean geometry. If you follow the ball sliding on the surface of the triangle from the top point, you'll notice something strange. It looks like the left side of the triangle is extending away from the viewer, while the right side is closer to you. The Penrose Triangle is the type of geometrical figure that can only exist as an optical illusion because this is what it looks like if we dismember it. Not a triangle at all, huh? And this next illusion is called the Pac-Man Chaser. You'll see why. Stare at the central cross for five seconds. The image appears to be in motion, doesn't it? And you might also see a green disc appear in between the lilac spheres from time to time. Now this image allows us to witness two illusions simultaneously. Firstly, although the image appears to be in continuous motion, nothing here is moving, we promise. This phenomenon is known as the Phi Phenomenon. It happens when stationary objects are placed side by side and illuminated rapidly one after another, creating an illusion of movement. Now look at the center of the image again. Can you see the green disc? This second illusion is called an after image, and this happens when your brain tries to substitute an item with something else as the original item disappears. But why is it green, you might ask? That's because green is lilac's complementary color. If we were to change the color of the disc to blue, then the color of the gap changes to yellow, which is blue's complementary color. Neat, right? Can you stare at this parrot's eye for 15 seconds? Just keep staring at it. I'll tell you when you can close your eyes. You're about to witness another example of an after image. Three, two, one, and close your eyes. 
Can you see a red parrot? Isn't it amazing that even though this parrot is black and white, you have the illusion of seeing the color red? Again, this is just your brain trying to guess the color of something. Don't these snakes move beautifully? Except that, um, they're actually stationary. This classic optical illusion is caused by repeating asymmetrical patterns together with specific color schemes. The illusion mixes lighter colors like yellow and white with darker shades of blue and black. This combination makes your retina send signals to your brain, claiming that these circles are moving. If you want to debunk this illusion and see things as they really are, you need to stare straight at one part of the image. This way, you'll see that the rotation will slowly come to a stop. Take a look at this image. It looks like the square in the middle is breathing, right? Like it's growing in size and then shrinking? What if I told you that it's just rotating, but not changing its size? Here's what's happening. This illusion is called motion binding. It happens when our brain tries to predict the movement of one of the elements in the image. Crazy stuff! This one's another example of a motion binding illusion. These four bars seem to be moving in parallel with each other, right? Wrong! They are all part of the same moving square. Here's what's happening behind the scenes. Our brain just gets confused. How many bars can you count here? This illusion has left the internet baffled. People have counted as many as 11 bars, but most people count between 8 and 7 bars. According to the creator of this image, there are only 6 complete bars. Try counting from top to bottom, and you'll notice that the upper bars are real. But by the time you get to the 6th bar, things start to get blurry and confusing. That's because the last two bars are incomplete. So when you try making them out, they appear to multiply and only leave you more confused. If you trace your pointer down the 7th and 8th bars, you'll be able to see that they are incomplete. They were only put there to confuse you. Can you tell if the dark blue lines are parallel to each other or inclined? They sure look crooked, but in reality they are not. This classic optical illusion was first described over 100 years ago, but it wasn't until the 1970s that it got its current name, the Café Wall Illusion. A guy named Steve Simpson noticed a similar effect on the wall of a cafe in Bristol. And here we are. Now let's see how this works. First, let's blur the image a little bit. Oh, a little bit more. There you go. This way you'll be able to see that the dark blue lines are parallel to each other. If you look closely, the little black and white bricks at the intersection of wide lines are what makes this illusion possible. In addition to that, the curved elements inside the blue lines help to make the elusive effect even stronger. If you look at this image attentively, you'll notice a moving square that appears to be changing in tone. What shades do you see? Dark, then light, then dark again? Wrong. The square doesn't change at all. The creator of this illusion is Japanese psychologist and artist Akiyoshi Kitaoka. According to him, you can see your own brain changing its guess about the color of the square. Color is already an illusion created by our brains. It so happens that color is created inside our visual systems. What our eyes perceive as blue is actually a wavelength that is reflected as that color. Moving on, take a look at this staircase. It looks pretty simple, right? Well, now let's flip the image upside down. It still looks like a staircase, but instead of going from right to left, it looks like it's going from left to right. But don't blink. If you blink, the illusion will disappear and you will be left with the original image. Whoa. This illusion is known as Schroeder's Staircase and it was invented by German scientist Heinrich Schroeder back in 1858. It's simple, yet it reveals a fundamental mechanism of how our brain works. If we dismember the staircase, you'll notice that the image is flat. What our brain perceives as a 3D image is just a combination of shadow and light. This means that the 3D itself is already an optical illusion. This happens because our brain captures images and tries to fit them into what it already knows. So it sees a shadow in a 2D image and understands depth. Basically, it creates an unreal perspective of the object in front of our eyes. In this case, we call it a three-dimensional perspective. Up next, look at this black square crisscrossed with perpendicular white lines. If you look attentively, you'll notice that the white dots situated at the intersection of the grid shift their color from white to gray and back. When you concentrate on a particular dot, you see that it's white, but as soon as your attention wanders, the dot turns gray. That's the Hermann grid illusion. Amazing, isn't it? We can take this illusion one step further by positioning white dots at the intersection of gray lines. All are placed on top of the black background. 
If you look at this image long enough, you'll notice black dots starting to pop up at the intersections of the grid, creating a scintillating effect. Another name for this illusion is a simultaneous light contrast illusion. As you perceive the dots as white at one moment, and then, almost immediately, you see them as black. So why do our senses let us down by making us see gray or black instead of white? This illusion demonstrates one of the most important principles of human perception. You don't always see things for what they are. The retinal cells in our eyes act as light receptors. When only one receptor gets illuminated, it perceives more light than when its colleagues are also illuminated. This prevents the firing of nearby receptors. With the Ermann grid illusion, the white lines are arranged in such a way that there's more light around the intersections than along the lines themselves. Thus the dots at the intersections are more inhibited, and you see darker spots. What do you say? Did your eyes pass the test? I guess mine did, but my brain is a little bit tired. See you next time. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side. Two best friends, Jack and Tyler, went to a tropical island to surf and have some rest. After an active day at sea, they bought a large watermelon and ate it. In an hour or so, Tyler felt unwell and lost consciousness. Luckily, he was taken to a hospital in time. The doctors there managed to save his life. But Jack couldn't wrap his mind around what had happened. Both guys ate the same watermelon. Tyler didn't have any kind of an allergy. Then how come Jack was perfectly fine? Jack didn't eat watermelon seeds, and Tyler did. Whatever substance poisoned him was in the seeds. Jerry got a job as a security guard at a supermarket. On his first day, he heard an alarm go off when a young woman was leaving the store. He stopped her and asked whether she had a receipt. She did, so Jerry checked it and the girl's bag. Everything looked okay, but the man still called the police. Why? The date on the receipt was wrong. The girl had bought all the products the day before and then came back the next day to steal the same stuff. A wealthy businessman was poisoned at a restaurant. When the police arrived, they questioned all other visitors who were there at that time. Albert said he'd been talking on the phone with his brother. Judy told the police she had been waiting in a bathroom line. Diana said she had been writing a report for her boss. And Philip said he had been putting on his clothes, ready to leave. Who's the culprit? It's Judy. Besides her, there were only three other visitors in the restaurant, and all of them were busy. There couldn't be any bathroom line. Catherine was a maid at the Smith's house. One day, she called the police and asked them to come as soon as possible. When they arrived, the woman told the officers the house owners were away on vacation. She was the only one to look after the house. In the morning, she went grocery shopping. On her way back, a man in a mask ran up to her and made her open the door and let him in. He tied Catherine to a chair, took all the valuables he could find, and sneaked out of the house. The woman started to shout for help. After some time, a passerby heard her shouting, entered the house, and untied her. Then he went away without leaving his name or phone number. After the detective heard this story, he arrested Catherine. Why? The Smith's house is away from the town, in a forest. There aren't likely to be any passers-by in that area. Plus, the fence is high and thick. Even if Catherine had been shouting, no one would have heard her. Janice rented an apartment with three other girls. Once, her mom came to visit her. She gave her daughter some money. Janice put the bills under a book lying on her desk and went to see her mom off. When she returned, there was no money in the room. The girl questioned her neighbors. Natalie answered she had just returned from her morning run. 
Brittany told Janice she'd wanted to read the book. After taking it, she put the money in the middle drawer. Kayla said she had entered the room just once to look for her scarf. Who took the money? It was Brittany. The desk has no middle drawer. A unique diamond was exhibited in a popular museum. No wonder it was guarded day and night. Only small groups of people were allowed to enter the room with the diamond. One of such groups had just left when the security guards heard a shrill alarm go off. They dashed inside and found a man who seemed to be as shocked as they were. The diamond was in its place. The guards searched the man and found nothing unusual. A phone, a wallet, a lighter, a bottle with water, and a camera. They let the man go. But soon, it was announced the diamond had been stolen. What happened? The man replaced the real thing with a fake gem. After that, he hid the famous diamond in his bottle with water. Two girls, Tina and Betty, got lost in the forest. After some time, each of them found a clearing with lots of berries growing there. By that moment, the girls had been starving. They decided to snack on the berries. But for one of them, it's going to be a grave mistake. Which girl is that? Betty is eating the berries from endangered plants. She's not supposed to do it, but they won't make her sick. Tina is munching on the berries that have knocked off a bird. It means they might be poisonous for the girl, too. Uh Uh-oh. Maria was walking down the street when someone slammed into her. It was a man who immediately started to apologize. The girl looked at him attentively and said, It's okay, Mark. How come she knew the man's name if he wasn't a celebrity and she had never seen him before? Maria knew the man's name because he was her friend's twin brother. Eric needs to get some documents from his colleague's safe. If he doesn't, he'll get fired the next day. But it turns out to be a tricky task. The safe has a password, and Eric has no idea how to crack it. It's a combination of letters O-T-T-F-F-S-S, with the last three letters missing. What are they? The missing letters are E and T. All of them are the first letters of the numbers from 1 to 10. One evening, Christian went to the backyard to enjoy some peanut cookies. He didn't want to leave any crumbs inside the house because his wife was allergic to nuts. But when the man opened the bag, he found just one cookie. Christian questioned his three kids. Alice, the eldest, puffed, Don't you remember I'm on a diet? Kelly, the middle child, said, I was studying upstairs. I didn't have time for cookies. And Joe, the youngest, answered he had been too busy helping his mom to make a peanut butter cake. So who gobbled down Christian sweets? It was Joe. Christian's wife is allergic to nuts. It would be too risky to make a cake with peanut butter. A rich man's house was burgled. Strangely, the thieves didn't take anything except for one painting. When the police arrived, the confused house owner told them he had bought the canvas at auction. It didn't cost much. He had no idea why the criminals had chosen to steal it. Pretty soon, the police detectives figure out what was so special about the painting. Can you? It wasn't about the painting itself, but about its expensive and unique frame. Mr. Johnson disliked modern art. 
One day, he ran into the City Art Museum and caused damage to several paintings, which cost millions of dollars. Instead of being arrested, though, he was invited to the manager of the gallery. The man started to thank Mr. Johnson and promised he would be rewarded. How come? Mr. Johnson was a firefighter. The water he used to put out the flames damaged several masterpieces. But he still managed to extinguish the fire, saving many more precious exhibits.